the past you know, 10 years as a wedding photographer and, and now diving into other areas of, of marketing as well, I've probably done about 2,000 consultations. And so really diving into all the different psychologies, the questions, the vibes, not just script sales, but getting into behavioral sales and all those different areas that you may come across. And so I know that uh, I want to ask you guys if you guys have ever experienced this. So I remember maybe it was about seven years ago. Uh, I, was, I was getting into you know, the wedding consultation script that we teach in the program. It wasn't quite there yet, but it was getting there. And I remember I met with this couple, and it was going great. You know, they're, they're vibing, they loved my work, discovery went really well. You know, I went over prices with them, and they didn't really bat an eye, they're excited. They didn't really have too many questions, or it seemed like they didn't have very many concerns at the end of this consultation. And, you know, uh, after the consultation, they're like, oh, this is all great. You know, we're going to go over and, and, and talk to family, and we'll be right back to you. And I was so confident. I was like, and I'll talk to you guys very soon. <laughs> and, you know what? I never heard from them again. <laughs> and so, today I want to talk to you about handling spoken and the unspoken odd objections in your wedding consultations. This will be a quick, maybe 15 minute lesson, but it's gonna be key. I'm gonna be giving you guys a lot of scripts, templates. Obviously in this different situations, these will change, but a general idea on where to be able to take these webs of conversation. So, in this lesson we're gonna cover the odd objections, um, the common objections, how to prevent some of them, and how to handle them when they do come up. So now, how handling objections will make you profit? Why is this important? So imagine that you charge $5,000 per wedding. Let's say, to make numbers simple, you have a 50% closing rate. So let's say this month you did eight consultations this month, so you closed $20,000 in revenue. Now, those other four, four of those couples said no. Two of them were a hard no. Like you are not gonna convert, you're not gonna convert them no matter what. You're gonna come across that. Two of them were on the fence. It's like you have that idea in your mind, could I have done something that converted this couple to move forward? If you knew how to handle those objections, it could have been an additional ten thousand dollars in revenue. So that twenty thousand dollar month could have been a thirty thousand dollar month if you just turn that 50% conversion this month into a 75% conversion. So the thing about objections, it's really easy for us to say when we get objections, ah, they, they weren't the right fit. No, this isn't the right prospect to, to work with me. And that's often what, when we don't know how to deal with it, it's, it's very often what we can opt it into. But handling sales objections is all about converting leads on the fence or handling people with their sales defenses up. Just because they don't want to be sold to does not mean they're not the right client. So, the first sales objection I want to go to actually happens in the beginning of the consultation. And it's when they are trying to steal your frame. So what do I mean by this? If you've gone through the album viewing script, we know what we're talking about when we're stating the agenda, we're building the frame. And most people in sales understand that it's important to frame the conversation. You, as the business owner, the seller, has the strong frame. You're giving a weak frame to the prospect. This gives you more control of the conversation to, to sell. Once in a while, though, you'll have a prospect who tries to steal that frame. It rarely happens in the wedding photography industry, but sometimes this will come in the form of a sophisticated buyer who understands the sales journey. They maybe have worked in sales before, or maybe they feel like they've been burned in the past before when they've been sold to. So they put this wall and they put this sales defense up. So sometimes, often, what this is the situation I come across most. Sometimes the bride, you know, she's a raving fan of your brand. The groom hasn't really paid attention to, to you at all. And she, she, this is his first time even like finding out about you. Or maybe it's not the groom, it's the parents, if they happen to be in the consultation. And they just don't even really want to be there. They're stressed out about money. They don't want to be sold to. And there's this sales defense that is up. 
And you'll come across this no matter how good your brand or your marketing is, just because they, there are these dynamics, you'll come across it. <clears throat> so this can come across as things like, save me your sales pitch. I, I'm just doing my research. Uh, for your information, I won't be putting a deposit down today. The most common one, I, I just like to get to the prices. It's my favorite. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring up to you what I like to say to this to get your frame back. So let's say they said, I just wanna get to the prices. <clears throat> yeah, Adam, uh, I'm prepared to talk about prices, which is what I know you reached out about. But first, I hope you wouldn't be offended if I got some context on your situation so we can focus the meeting on what's relevant to you. Sounds good? Now, why does this work? When you say, I'm prepared to talk about prices, you're starting where they're at. They don't wanna get through discovery, they don't wanna go through this, all these questions, what they think is BS, they just wanna to get to the prices. So we're starting where they're at. I, I hope you wouldn't be offended. Well, this makes it difficult for them to resist so it doesn't sound petty. Oh, of course, oh, yeah, I, I won't be offended, let's just go ahead and do that. Um, so I can get some context on your situation. Diving into discovery when they feel this way might trigger resistance for the defensive buyer. Framing it as context will make more sense to them. So, so I can get some more context on your situation. And then, so we can focus the meeting on what's relevant to you. End with a benefit. It frames you as the trusted advisor instead of the salesperson. So, Adam, I'm prepared to talk about prices, which is what I know you reached out about, but first, I hope you wouldn't be offended if I got some context on your situation so we can focus the meeting on what's relevant to you. Sounds good? Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. Now, this one's not really an objection. And by the way, I'll send this to everyone as well, all these slides that you can use as scripts. I know that's a lot we're going to be going over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 see, I see everyone writing these down like really quick. Go back. Go this, back. this one isn't really a sales objection, but I just wanted to add this in there because it's important to know how to ask for the sale when the opportunity is right. So asking for the sale when they are on the fence. <clears throat> if they are not on the fence, you know, they're an enthusiastic prospect, you've gone over prices, and everything seems ready, I'll just be like, let's do this, or ready to move forward right now, ready to do this, and maybe they'll move forward that day, maybe they'll move forward you know, um, within the ne that next day. If the prospect is on the fence, you know, you've tried going through some objections, uh, you, you feel some vibes that quite aren't there, uh, this is what I like to say. Um, so depending on the situation, sounds good. After reviewing the info and, and talking this over with family, this is a key word here, are you opposed to reserving your date by tonight or tomorrow to get the savings? No, we're not opposed to that. Awesome, I'll follow up with you in the morning. Are you opposed? Lowers the sales defenses than say, let's do this. You know, if you say let's do this or ready to move forward right now with someone who has that guard up, it's gonna go up even more. So are you opposed after doing whatever they say they need to do? Think about it, talk to family, whatever that is. Are you opposed to moving forward by tomorrow once you've gone through that? Yeah, we're not opposed to doing that. Cool. So are you opposed? How much time do we have to decide? So I am framing this, um, I am framing everything from incentive-based pricing that we taught in the consultation or some of the bonuses that you may do as well. So let's say at the end of the consultation they say, how much time do we have to decide? So when that, this comes up, I typically like to say something like this. We typically like to hold incentive-based pricing for 72 hours, or if you're doing something else, we typically only hold your date for seven days. How much time do you need to decide? Is there something in particular that you need to discuss, that, that, that you need to think about, that we can discuss right now? Oftentimes they're saying this because there's an unspoken objection, and you must talk about it now. Because if you let them leave the conversation without discussing whatever it is that's on their mind, maybe it's prices, maybe, <clears throat> maybe they're not sure if they can afford it, maybe they do need to talk to more family, less chances that they'll actually reach out to work with you. So, 
uh, again, right over here. Is there something in particular that you need to think about that we can discuss right now? Hear them out. If you can get them to ask more questions, it can help them make the decision sooner. And this will likely bring up other objections that we're about to go over in a bit. And if they truly do need more time, uh, give it to them as necessary. Like if there is a situation where they just do need more time than whatever incentive or time frame you give, you've given them, give it to them. This, will likely, this might lead over to we need more time to think about it. Um, we need more time to think it over. And this is what I typically like to say when this happens. <clears throat> I get that, and I encourage that. We, we wanna make sure couples 100% know that it's a good fit before committing. Just so I know we're on the same page. What have we not discussed that you still need to think about? That's why I take the time on these calls to answer every question and help you make an exciting decision. Um, while we're still in this meeting, what questions or concerns do you have that are still unanswered? Similar situation. Figuring out what is an unspoken concern, objection, or question. So now we can discuss it. Um, the more questions answered, the higher the conversions, the higher chance that they'll reach back up to you when you follow up. And again, if they truly do need more time than you offered, figure out what would be appropriate and give it to them. Most common one, we can't afford this or it's, it's too expensive. And this is, I'm telling you this, if you get this objection, it's a good thing. Because they're being straight up of what their issue is. You know, the other objections that I, I just mentioned, they're so vague, and you have to do a little bit more digging on, on what really is the issue here. But if they're saying we can't afford this, I like this because now I can help them problem solve the issue. So we can't afford this. I typically like to say this. If they say we can't afford this or it's too much money. <clears throat> I understand finances can be a challenge. And we really love to work with couples in this scenario. I think we can help, but I just want to make sure. If money 100% was not an issue, would you 100% desire to work with us? Or is it something else? Because if it's not a good fit, that's OK. The reason why I'm doing this, I am making sure money is the actual issue. Because if they're saying money is the issue, but they, there's something about your packages, or there's something about your work that they're not resonating with, you have to discuss that. And so. You know, likely, hopefully, they will say money is 100% of the issue, so you can move on to the next step, and you've isolated that. Um, so they'll probably say something like, of course, we, we love your work. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. It's just finances. Great. Well, if there was a, a smaller payment plan or deposit, would that be helpful? How can we make this work for you? Key question, we're trying to get them from thinking black and white to problem solving mode. So how can we make this work for you? Yes, that, that would be helpful. And work with them on a smaller payment plan or deposit. Get them in problem solving mode to figure out what works. And once they, they, you get them in this mode, what you want to do is ask permission to get honest with their financial situation. Have a conversation about cash they have available, credit they have available, family who are interested in helping out with, with their wedding. Help them put together a plan that works for the both of you. And, and, and if you have enough leads, you know, and in, in this case, if you have enough leads coming in where you don't necessarily need every client, you know, maybe you can just let this one go. But if you're in a situation where it's like, I need every client that I can get, you want to be able to problem solve this situation. And at this point when you're problem solving, there's not really so much a, a script or template you can follow. Once you get permission, it's just really being authentic and trying to work out what can possibly work out in that situation for the both of you. Now, um, this is one where they're a little bit trying to steal your frame, and, but there's a deeper issue with what they're bringing up here. We've met with other photographers who, who are cheaper. And what's happening here, there's another concern that they're bringing up and they're trying to get you to negotiate. Um, there's different ways you can handle this situation. This is a general, general one I like to use um, that you can work with and kind of see what works out with you as well. So prevention, first off. <clears throat> if this objection does come up, it is possible that you are unsuccessful in getting the couple to connect and build emotional investment in your work. 
So go deep in discovery and connecting to their likes when sharing their work. This way they see what makes you unique and what makes you have a different experience. The exper different, and that's the key word, experience in other photographers, because every photographer can offer a 10 hour package. You know, we don't want this to be focused on the features, but when you can focus it on the experience, it's a total different frame of mind that we're trying to build. But if it just still comes up, I, I like to say something like this, <clears throat> and I'll explain why this works. I get it, we're, we're definitely not cheap and, and not for everyone with the luxury experience we give our couples and the end product we deliver. So I can ensure we're on the same page. Are our packages within your budget? What questions or concerns do you have? So I'm just being straight up honest, getting to the core of what the issue is. Is, is it because it is over budget? Or is there some concerns they're not bringing up? I'll have that conversation with them. After they've answered that, I, depending on the situation, I may ask this question. So when it comes to the experience, what are the cheaper budget photographers promising you that you feel we don't deliver? And that way we can see what the core issues, what it is, if they even met with other photographers or if they're just throwing something out yeah. there. And so these are key words that I like to use and, and why. So it's not cheap. If you're really not cheap, you know, agree with them. Don't try to argue that, that point, it's pointless. And I'll, I'll just be like, yeah, we're not cheap. It's not, for everyone. So this one, this removes sales pressure and it builds authority because it's framing it in a way where I don't need you, you're gonna continue chasing me. And that's key. So yeah, we understand it's not for everyone and, and that's okay. Key framing that you wanna do there. And then mentioning the reason why is because of the luxury experience. A word to understand why you are not cheap. So maybe the features are maybe the same, which is why the consult what you do in the consultation is key, but uh, reframing that to build contrast a little bit. Then questions. We need to get to the core of the issue. Is it budget? Is it another concern that they haven't discussed? And then if that doesn't work, um, what's the experience that these other photographers you're talking about are talking about? So when you bring that up question, if you truly do offer an amazing experience and you communicated that well, this can help build contrast uh, if they don't have a good answer. If they do have a good answer, it may reveal gaps in your service and presentation. And if you did a great job, they won't have much to say on that and it will likely lead, this will likely just end up leading to the budget objection that we talked about. I need to talk to my fiance or I need to talk to my family. This is a really common one that you're gonna be coming across, especially family. Prevention before the consultation. This can 100% be prevented. So ensure both partners plan to be at the consul consultation and reschedule if they can't. Um, I've closed ones where it was just you know one of them, but it makes it a lot more difficult because you're leaving it up to, you know, the bride to sell it to the partner, which is, you don't know how good their selling skills are, so you never know how that's gonna go. Find out if family is financing ahead of time. I have a questionnaire in my contact form that actually asks this, you know, who's financing the wedding? <clears throat> and if the, if the family is, have the couple invite them to the consultation. So um, I, after that messaging back and forth, say with the couple or maybe on the phone or something, I'll uh, be like, talk to you guys tomorrow. P.S. If family is financing the wedding, bring them on the consultation tomorrow as well so I can answer any questions they, they may have also. Now, if for some reason it does come up, like you, it was impossible to get you know, the, the partner onto the consultation or you just could not get them to get family on the consultation, this is the conversation I like to have. Totally understand, curious. After sharing with your family the packages and, and info, do you think they'll be on board as well? They might say, oh, they'll probably think it's a little expensive. And especially if they say they'll think it's pretty expensive, you really wanna make sure that um, you bring this conversation up. Okay, well, would it be helpful if I did the same presentation with them so they have the opportunity to see the value that you see as well? <coughs> yeah, that, that would be awesome. This would, if you did the exact presentation that you just did with us, like I really think we can get them on board. Great, 
What time will they likely be free tomorrow? And what is their number so I can contact them and set up a time to chat? And I might call or text, say if I texted, I might say something like, like this. Hey, uh, this is Jordan from J-Core Photography. Uh, Crystal had a chat with me about photography for their wedding day. She gave me your number and wanted me to chat with you as well so you can get the necessary info needed and questions answered. When are you free today or tomorrow? And that way I'm framing that it was you know, the bride who gave me their information and everything. And you must get parents emotionally invested as well if they are paying. Emotional investment is key because when someone is emotionally invested in your brand and what you offer, you can easily get them to those higher ticket prices. They will much more easily see that value. So, conclusion here. An objection is not a no. And a, an objection does not necessarily mean that they are a, ba a bad client or that they're just not the right fit. And I want you to start seeing it like this. Objections are a web of conversations. It literally is. I, I did my best to kind of show it in the right order. But let's say, you know, after you bring up prices, you get the first objection. Um, how much time do we have to think about this? Depending on how you handle that conversation, that might lead to objection two. Um, we, we, we're going to need more time to think about this. Depending on how you handle that conversation, it'll likely lead to price. Uh, honestly, we just can't afford it. <laughs> and how you handle that conversation and, and how you help them problem solve that issue can be whether if it leads to a no or a sale. It's a web of conversation. And when you view objections as this, you actually see it as opportunities. So objections are not a no but opportunities that the couple is actually giving you. Objections simply come up when questions, concerns, or prospect situations are present that were not discussed during discovery. So the deeper discovery is, the less objections you'll get. In-depth discovery can help prevent certain objections. It is your job as the business owner to be assertive and answer both spoken and be able to be aware enough to be able to bring up those unspoken objections. And most objections eventually lead the price the, to the price objection. You'll see that 90% of like all the objections I went over will eventually just lead the price. And if you keep that in mind, you'll get better at navigating that uh, conversation. And done right, this can get you way more sales. Like I showed, you know, if you are closing at say 50% and you can raise that to 70%, that could be an additional $10,000 in revenue a month. And some final thoughts I want to bring you. I won't be doing a q and I'm going to send you guys the scripts in the DM chat that we had. If you have questions, you can reach out to me personally throughout the entire weekend. I'll answer them for you. But final thoughts I want to bring when it comes to this. Practice these until they are memorized and you can adapt with them. It needs to become second nature. Because when you first get into sales, it's all about script sales. That's what teaches you what the journey can look like that we need to take these people through. But once you've done enough of these and it's become second nature, it starts to become behavioral sales. That's the next level of sales, where it's not just about the script and you're so robotic with the script, but it's the psychology, the vibes, the adapting to those vibes you see. And now you can tell, uh, usually I can tell when someone has a price objection without them bringing up now. It's like, uh, you see it in their eyes after a while. <laughs> and I want you to change your, your mindset when it comes to sales and objections because it's so easy to have these, you know, one, being intimidated with it, two, feeling like you're just this, this salesy, sleazy person. But I 100% believe that sales is, is service to lead people to what they truly desire. So get excited and don't be intimidated when you get sales objections. When prospects have objections, they are not saying no, it is a concern. They are actually opening up more opportunities for you to get them emotionally invested in your brand. When you get good at this, it actually opens up opportunities to continue to sell. The words you say and use have power. So learn to be precise with the language that you use. I'll be honest, like I'm someone, I'm, usually, I'm a man of very little words sometimes. And so that was very difficult for me 
to get used to is you know, being more outspoken, being a little bit more precise with my language. It took a long time for me, but, and that's going to take practice if you're that same type of way. But learn to be more precise with the wording that you use. And finally, when you don't sell your service, you're withholding who you are from the world, which could impact people greatly. Put yourself out there. Sell your service. Take more risks. Your business can change a life.